Hello everyone, John Call here, sports physical therapist. I'm here with Brian Canelli, athletic trainer, and today we're going to be showing you how to properly set up a strength test for knee extension and knee flexion. In order to do a proper strength test, you're going to need two pieces of equipment. You're going to need a handheld dynamometer. Here I'm using the MicroFET 2, and I'm also going to be using a gate belt for stabilization. In order to get a good quality, valuable strength test, there's a few criteria that you need to nail down. The first one is going to be patient setup. We're gonna have something that's comfortable for the patient. We're gonna have something where the joint is aligned correctly. And we're gonna make sure that the dynamometer is in line with the tibia. The second is your cueing and your procedure. You need to have a standardized, reliable, and reproducible standard way of cueing the patient with rest intervals in order to get a good quality result that's reproducible in the future. So the first step is you're going to seat your patient on a table, preferably something comfortable. If the table is a little bit rough on the edge, you're going to want to stick a towel roll underneath the knee. This way they don't have any discomfort when they're performing their strength test. After that, you're going to set up your gait belt for proper stabilization. Now you're going to give a little bit of leeway here because you're going to have to fit the dynamometer between the gait belt and the tibia. So I like to fasten it where I have a little bit of play here. And to test it, you're going to put the dynamometer here. I'm going to have Brian just gently kick in. And now in this position, all you're going to do is make sure your joint angles are correct. So you can use a goniometer to measure or you can use your phone or an inclinometer and place it on the tibia to make sure that you're at 90 degrees. In order to calculate knee extension torque, which can be compared to the patient's body weight, you're going to need to measure the tibia. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a tape measure in centimeters and you're going to measure from the joint axis of rotation, so the tibiofemoral joint line, and you're going to measure down to where exactly where you had the handheld dynamometer. So one more important point, after your setup, you want to make sure that the dynamometer is perpendicular to the tibia. So if you're at 90 degrees, you're going to have it set up directly here. If Brian's leg was more at about 60 degrees, you want the dynamometer to be fixated in this plane of origin where it's perpendicular to the tibia. So for your testing, proper stabilization is key. So as we perform the test, I'm going to cue Brian to sit up nice and tall, and he's going to grab the sides of the table for stability to keep his body stable as he's pushing with maximal effort. The next step is a standardized testing procedure. So the patient or the athlete is going to get three to five warm-up sets, and then they're going to get three to five working sets at a maximum intensity effort to really get a good reproducible number. So the first step, we're going to start with warm-ups. We're going to do about three to five warm-ups. I usually like to start with 50% effort, working up to 75% effort, and then about 90% effort, and then I get into my working sets. So my first cue is I'm going to say, Brian, I want you to kick into the dynamometer with about 50% of your maximum effort. After he performs this, I'm going to have him rest for about 15 to 30 seconds, and then I'm going to repeat that test at 75% effort, and then at 90% effort. Once I get to 90% effort, I'm going to give him about a full minute off. Then we're going to get into our working testing Once procedures. we get into our testing trials, I'm going to give him about three to five testing trials with full rest in between sets. So what does this mean? You're going to rest for at least a minute to make sure that every single trial that is performed is going to be at maximal effort where we're not accumulating fatigue over those trials. So cueing is important. What you're going to cue the athlete for a maximum effort test is you're going to say, I want you to ramp up over the course of one second and push as hard as you can, holding that for about five seconds. As the athlete performs this test, you need to be giving them verbal encouragement. And that's going to take the form of push, 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 kick, 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 hard, 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 hard. This verbal encouragement is going to increase the amount of neural drive that they send to their quadriceps during this test and it's going to give you a true maximum effort reading. So you're going to push as hard as you can, ramp up over the course of one second, and hold that for five seconds. Okay. Ready, set, go. Kick, 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 kick. So after you perform three to five max effort trials, you can do two things. You can either take an average of those trials, or you can take the highest value. A lot of the literature that has been looking into knee extension torque and strength does work on peak force, so you might want to consider taking the highest value, but an average is fine as well. 
So that's a wrap. That's how you properly structure a quadriceps strength test. It can be done at 90 degrees or it can be done at 60 degrees. Use those numbers to inform your clinical decision making and you will not be disappointed. In this example, I showed you guys how to measure quadriceps strength at 90 degrees. And I chose this because it's the most applicable for the most amount of PTs. It's very easy to set up whether you're using a plyometric box or the side of a plinth, um, and it's usually pretty comfortable for the patient. However, you can measure quadriceps strength at 60 degrees, and this is going to give you probably a slightly higher reading on the force output because of the length tension relationship. So if you're doing it at 60 degrees, make sure you follow the same standardized procedure and the setup. However, the only thing that will differ will make sure that the handheld dynamometer is in line in a perpendicular axis to the tibia, this way you're getting a good reading.